أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي It's very exciting to see all of these beautiful faces after the past few years of COVID and now alhamdulillah we are all back in sessions As it was described in the its initial uh, introduction here let me ask by a show of hands, how many of you are aware about the Ikna Dawa Academy? Raise your hand if you have heard about it. Wonderful. Some people are aware of that. That's great. So hopefully this session, at the end of this session, you will have a true appreciation of the depth and the importance of this topic. By show of hands, how many people have taken one of these courses? Okay, uh, the light is right in my face, so I'm just, it's harder to see. Okay, so just some, some people. Brothers and sisters, the Ikna Dawa Academy uh, started a few years ago. And alhamdulillah, over the past more than two years now, have trained hundreds of people. I myself has been part of these trainings, and I've actually was a student. As a student, I have learned tremendous amount of knowledge in terms of how to approach non-Muslims, how to really understand where they're coming from, how to have an understanding and appreciation of what their backgrounds are. Because if you are trying to deal with a problem or you're trying to provide a solution, which in this case, for all of us, it is Islam. We are approaching non-Muslims with the message of Islam, but do we truly understand how to negotiate that? How to present that? What are the arguments for that? What is rational? What is spiritual? What is, what is going to really make an impact to these people? Over the past two years, ICNA has you know, launched many courses and they are being repeated, I would highly, highly recommend every one of you, please, as you are watching this session, as you are listening to these sessions, look up the, the URL for the Dawah Academy. I think it's right here uh, on my back here. Look at the courses and, in, and enroll in one of them. And it's an exp extremely expensive course of $50 a semester. So I think it will be one of the most worth $50 that you'll ever spend on your own education. I highly recommend it. The knowledge, the teaching methodology, yes, you will be engaged for almost uh, six weeks, uh, one, one class per, uh, per week, about hour and a half, two hours. Very dedicated teachers with practical examples. Brothers and sisters, why do I say that? And even before getting into the topic. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his last sermon said something very phenomenal. Those who are present, they must communicate this religion to those who are absent. And at that time, we were the one who were absent. And the Sahaba were the ones who were present. And they took this mantle and they took the baton and continued their journey until they have reached, until it reached us here today. The reason yet you and I are Muslims today, those from the subcontinent, those from other parts of the world, they are Muslim today because those shahid, those present at that time, really took it upon themselves to communicate this message of Islam, this beautiful, beautiful way of living to those 
who were not present. And because of that, you and I and our children and our generations, inshallah, will be experiencing and living Islam through this experience. Brothers and sisters, I will try to be brief here for this first topic. But many of us, if you have watched or you may have spoken to or talked to one of your colleagues at work, and people tell you this, right? You've heard this terminology. It may not be as common, but there are a lot of people. If you've been part of a dawah group or you've gone through on a street dawah and just or were part of a, a tabling at some event and people came by and you asked them, so what, what is your faith? And they, what would they say? Ah, uh, I'm spiritual but not religious. And you know, it's kind of in the context of, of Islam and Muslim, it really is difficult to understand. How could you be spiritual but not religious? But we have to understand. <clears throat> we really have to have an understanding of what, for example, terms such as SBNR, SBNA. What was that? Spiritual but not religious, SBNR. Sp <laughs> spiritual but not affiliated, SBNA, right? Or sometimes people will say, um, uh, you know, um, uh, more spiritual than religious. And you have to understand it in the context of where they're coming from. In fact, uh, a Pew Research of in 2017, they did a research, uh, and they surveyed about 27 percent. 27 percent of the Americans stated that they are spiritual but not religious, which is which was up by eight percent compared to 2012. In addition to another 48 percent claim that in this survey to be both religious and spiritual, down from 59 percent in 2012. So. Overall, this shows that while affiliation with a particular religious tradition has gone down, but still 75% of the surveyed Americans claim to be spiritual. And that is important to understand because this concept of being spiritual can mean or have different meanings for different people. In general, the definition of a spiritual is something sacred, higher, valuable than a person wants to achieve. For some people, it is a connection with nature that defines their spirituality. So spirituality is more than just a pursuit, pursuit of material possessions in one's daily life. This desire in the majority of the population to be spiritual, even among us those who do not follow a particular religion points towards an inherent understanding amongst us that there's something higher and more valuable out there than just material possession. So the question really arises why people have really turned away or what is really driving them away from being religious. Again, in, in the general context of being religious, if you're religious, then you are really adhering by certain beliefs and practices and rituals. And it's important to understand why people reach that point. What is the driving force? Why are they really tired of, do not like to associate with a religious, uh, a, a, an organized religion? And why do they think that there is a higher being, but we want to be a good person, we want to be a kind person, uh, we want to be a, uh, you know, someone who can live peacefully with everyone. And there are some reasons for that. The basic dilemma for a lot of people is this. They understand the three things. They understand the three elements. There's, number one is that there is a soul, there's something more than the physical body. That they believe in God. I mean, if you, if you dissect the whole concept of spirituality, these people are believers in God. They believe in a soul or something that is more than physical. And they may have an understanding 
or an expectation of, the, of an afterlife. So there is sort of a, this uh, kind of a hazy picture in their mind about what spirituality means. Now the question is, coming back to the question of religion, and what's wrong with that religious, religious affiliation or that term? People associate religion with violence, looking at it historically. Uh, people associate it, and again, in the context of the scandal that we've seen in the churches, they associate sexual abuses in organized structures of, uh, of religious institutions. And they sometimes, there are scandals of monetary nature. People who have abused their power, clergy. And this is not limited to Christianity. It happens in Islamic uh, institutions. And similar types of scandals have really happened. And because of this, it has become uh, a sore point for a lot of people. And the people have started, have stopped believing or wanting to be associated with a religion, with an organized religion. So if you start to sum this up and you are approached by a person who is describing themselves as being spiritual but not religious, having that background, having that understanding really can help you communicate with this person. Now, <clears throat> it's important to note that if someone wants to be spiritual without following a particular belief and practices, then they will not advance in their spirituality. On the other hand, those who follow religious practices, and we see this commonly, right? Those who follow religious practices without focusing on their spirituality are simply going through actions without understanding their meaning and purpose. In reality, in reality, religion is the path towards spirituality. That's what we are trying to communicate. That's what we want people to understand. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I mean, we are talking about getting closer to God. And it's not being physically closer to God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We created a human being, and we know that dark suggestions in his mind makes to him. We are nearer to him than, his, than even his jugular vein. So being closer to God means to manifest God's attributes in our being, and this is only achieved by having faith and performing the religious obligations. So it's important to understand that we do not reach the spiritual potential that we are capable of achieving for various reasons, including not acknowledging the spiritual aspect of our existence. Spirituality is a path to tread on. With spiritual growth, there is an actual inner transformation in our being as one moves from stage to stage. And take the example of a butterfly. The butterfly goes from being a, a larva to the second stage of papa and then the final stage of being a butterfly. We as human beings must go through these stages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this. He says, tabaq. And in all this, I want you, brothers and sisters, to have this understanding because the purpose of this talk is to give you an understanding of the mindset of this person who is saying, I'm spiritual but not religious. Why is he saying that? And how are you going to communicate this philosophy and this change of attitude that, is, that basically, basically states that if you feel like there is this open to all, free for all way of life is going to be possible, then think twice. That's really not going to help you. By becoming closer to God, 
is through the sincere practices of religion, the sincere practices of an organized religion, which continue to improve your spirituality. And that is the purpose. At the end of the day, we always hear this term. Every speaker will talk to you about this. We're doing this to please God. We're doing this to please God. That God's pleasure, that sincere practice that we continue to engage in. The question becomes, what are those practices if you don't follow an organized religion such as Islam? And we believe that Islam is that final version that everyone is expected to follow. So, Ali radiallahu anhu famously have said, whoever knows his soul knows his Lord. Whoever knows his soul knows his Lord. And you have to think about that. You have to contemplate the concept of how am I going to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on my own? And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, all of us here who are Muslims, we must be extremely, extremely thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be a Muslim. Brothers and sisters, you have no idea the kind of transformation that is required when you are really coming from a different faith and the kind of effort that it takes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <clears throat> وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And guard yourself against the evil of the day when you shall be made to return to God. Then every soul shall be paid in full for what it has accomplished. And no injustice shall be done to them. These are pointers for all of us to remember as we are talking to people who define themselves as spiritual, but not religious. You can really communicate with them. Again, the, the, the intent of this session is to give you pointers. The true ability to communicate these complex, sometimes complex philosophical concepts is going through a class. And this is where I feel that ICNA has done an amazing job in terms of developing da'is. I understand this may not be for everyone. This, everyone may not feel that this is something they can engage in because there is so much knowledge that they lack. But honestly speaking, I'll tell you the truth. Going through these classes will enable you to have a clear understanding of what your role is, what is Islam says about uh, the, eventual, the eventual goal of life, the purpose of life, and how you communicate that. What are the examples? What are the uh, rationales? What do you know about if this person is, is an uh, you know, agnostic, if, if this person is an atheist, if this person is a Christian, if this person is a Jew? How do you communicate these concepts? Brothers and sisters, these symptoms are becoming more widespread. Many in our own fold. Many of the children who are growing in our own households, if you listen to them and if you hear their conversations, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. And no one, you, I would not spare anyone. Sometimes we feel like we are living in a protected bubble. And we are living in a protected bubble sometimes. Open your mind as to what's happening around you. Even our own children, the lack of these understanding, the lack of these concepts is going to hit hard. Sometimes our children, our family members are struggling with the same thing. Why I can't be a good person? Why can't I be, you know, someone who would not harm anybody? Why can't I be a person who can live in peace? Why would Allah, you know, send people to, uh, to, to hell? What about the people of the past, people who do perfectly good things? What is going to happen to them? 
how does Islam answer these questions? If you know all these answers, great. But if you struggle yourself, and I'll close with this one example. A, a few, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of, uh, some, time, some time ago, at the end of a khutbah, a person reaches out to me. He said, I'm 75 years old. Today, my six-year-old son asked me this question. He said, who created God? How do I answer him? Who created God? A 75-year-old Muslim is unable to answer the question to a five-year-old grandson as who created God. So I gave him an answer. I said, like, you have to answer the question based on the age of the, of the child. So just basically tell the child that God cannot be created. Anybody who is created is not, cannot be God. Just give him that answer. My, my point is, brothers and sisters, is this. Being in America, being on this mission of فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ We have to be mindful of how to communicate. What are the types of isms and philosophies that are really spreading in around us, at our workplaces, at our schools, at, in our homes? How do we deal with that? And in all honesty, ICNA has done an amazing job when it comes to da'wah, when it comes to helping us answer these questions. I urge you, please, seriously take a look at these courses. Join them. They, are, they will change you, the way you think about Islam. They will change the way and your ability and your conviction, your conviction first, let alone the other people, right? You have to put your mask on first, right? That's what we say in the, 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 uh, you know, the flight attendants will remind you every time. We have to put our mask on. We have to believe in this in a way that is rational, that is spiritual, that is deep. And that's the only way we're going to be able to, inshallah, change the world. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.